Hello, my name is Jeremiah Underwood and I'm a critical care paramedic and teach for Forsyth Tech. Today we'll be talking about endocrinology and endocrine emergencies, also altered mental status and the drug Benadryl. The biggest thing to remember about the endocrine system is it's just a bunch of glands. Uh, each have its own type of hormone and they secrete it directly into the bloodstream itself. So to review a little bit of anatomy, you have the endocrine system uh, in all areas of the body. Uh, you have the hypothalamus, the pineal body, and the pituitary gland all located inside the brain. You have the thyroid and the parathyroids which are located in the throat. You have the thymus gland which is over top of the heart. The adrenal gland, uh, which is located over top of each of the kidneys. The pancreas, which is actually retroperitoneal in the abdominal cavity. And then the testes and the ovaries in the male and females, respectively. So one of the first type of uh, endocrine emergencies we're going to talk about is diabetes. Uh, we see it one of the most often things we do see in pre-hospital uh, medicine. Um, and diabetes, simply put, is just a condition brought about by decreased insulin production or the inability of the body cells to use that insulin properly. So what you see before you now is just simple glucose, glucose regulation in a normal patient. Um, it starts off with you eat a meal. When you eat a meal, your blood glucose goes up. Uh, at that point, insulin is secreted by the pancreas uh, and your blood glucose goes down because of that. The insulin helps take the glucose and put it into the cells where it can be used. So now we're going to talk about hypoglycemia, which is the most common of the diabetic emergencies that we see. Uh, it has a very rapid onset. Uh, most of the time the patients are pale, cool, and diaphoretic uh, and has an altered LOC, anything from confusion to combativeness to complete coma. Um, some of the causes is taking too much of their insulin, which reduces their blood sugar, uh, excessive vomiting and diarrhea, which also reduces blood sugar because you're not able to keep the nutrients in your body, uh, an abnormal increase in exertion, which will burn off too much of the sugars and your energy, uh, or a reduced sugar intake, somebody who's not eating enough. So now we're going to talk about hyperglycemia, right? Um, it has a very slow onset, uh, days to weeks, sometimes even months. The patient will usually be warm, dry, and flushed and have an acetone odor on their breath. Um, think of like a juicy fruit type of odor. Uh, the patient will also have uh, abdominal cramps and altered LOC. Um, one of the other key things is the polys, and this comes in the, by using your sample history and asking the questions uh, when you assume hyperglycemia. Uh, the polys are uh, polyuria, which is uh, constant urination, polyphagia, uh, constant hunger, and polydipsia, which is where they're thirsty all the time. And all this is due to uh, the increased uh, sugar inside of their bloodstream. Some of the causes of hyperglycemia is an insufficient insulin intake, uh, infection can also cause it, stress, and also an increased sugar intake. So now we're going to look at glucose meters, which is what we use to determine if the patient is hyper, hypoglycemic, or just normal. Um, they are, uh, usual range is 10 to 600 milligrams per deciliter, uh, and outside of that you either get a low or a high reading, but each one of them are different. And as you can see on your screen, there's all different types of glucose meters out there. Um, the one in the top uh, left-hand corner is usually the type that we use, but the patients have a multitude of different types that they can use. So a quick note on lancets, which is the uh, most of the time spring-loaded uh, small needle that we use to puncture the skin and get that drop of blood for the glucose meter. Uh, there again, there's all different types. Most patients use the one on the screen that's kind of black, um, and it's a multi-use kind of thing. Uh, the one on the bottom right is usually the type that we use, but there are many different types out there. Uh, they are uh, all considered sharps, uh, even though if they self-retract, you still want to put them in a sharps container. So now we'll go through the method that we use um, to obtain that glucose reading. Uh, first thing you need to do is select your strip and place it in the machine. Uh, then you will take an alcohol prep and prep the skin uh, and wait for that alcohol to dry, which usually happens very quickly. Take your lancet of whatever type, uh, puncture the skin, uh, and then take your uh, glucose strip and, and get that one little drop of blood off of it. And after that you get your reading. 
So now that you have that reading, you need to know what they mean. All right, uh, ranges from 80 to 120 are usually about normal. Uh, 60 to 80 are moderate uh, hypoglycemia. Uh, less than 60 is usually a severe and needs treatment. Uh, and then the other end of that spectrum, anything above 120 is hyperglycemia. But there is a note there that most of the time we don't do anything about it as far as treating hyperglycemia until it gets above about 250. So if a patient is exhibiting symptoms and has hyperglycemia, there's not a whole lot we can do as EMT basics in the pre-hospital world. Most of the time it's just supportive care. Uh, you can request ALS if you feel it's necessary and of course just transport. So for hypoglycemia, we can do just a little bit more. Uh, we can apply um, oral glucose, administer that if the patient is conscious and has a gag reflex. Uh, also supportive care like oxygen, suction, if it's necessary. You can request ALS if the patient is unconscious and, of course, transport. So we'll take a minute to talk about that treatment of oral glucose. Uh, your dosage is 1 gram per kilogram or 15 grams or one tube. Um, if the blood glucose is less than 60, uh, you have to make sure the patient has the ability to swallow, is conscious, uh, and it is fast acting to increase your uh, or the patient's blood glucose. So the two ways we administer oral glucose is one, orally. Um, we can give it to the patient and allow them basically to self-administer it. Uh, the second option is buccally. Uh, we take it and put it on a bite, st a bite stick and place that stick with the oral glucose on it between the cheek and gum uh, and allow it to absorb that way.